Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Psycho Goldfish. Everybody, it's me, Cycle Goldfish, hosting another lovely episode of the New Grounds Podcast. Uh, we have a repeat guest with us, uh, Almighty Hans. Hans Van Harken is joining us, and just like last time, he brought him out with a crew of friends. How you doing, Hans? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. So, uh, why are we here today, Hans? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about one of the uh, live action entries to the New Grounds portal. Uh, called Mutton Chops. Uh, it's a li- it's a little web series we made a while ago, a couple years ago now. But we're doing like a kind of a post mortem. Not, not that it's dead, dead, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're also joined by uh, uh, your director Chase. How you doing, Chase? Doing great, man. Thanks. Excited to be here. There's a, an adorable little bearded fellow in the corner there. Is that Tomar? Tomar, how are you doing, my friend? Hey there, I'm doing swell. I- I think I was on this podcast once long, long ago, and I th- it may have just been Will at the time. Yeah, uh, that was the old Grounds Patrol. Um, oh, that was the Grounds Patrol. Yeah, okay, it's that, cool now because I'm that's on That's the it. predecessor of this. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've also got an unannounced guest who uh, we kind of added at the last minute, uh, Mr. Dex the Swede. How are you doing? Hello, hello. As usual, I am uh, always last minute, and it's good to see that... Uh, uh, you have some Scandinavian representatives on this uh, little podcast of yours. Hello. That's right. You we we got to get more Scandinavian stuff. Yeah, you're, you're so underrepresented. Absolutely. We need more We need more tall white people. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> tall. Uh, yeah, Dex uh, isn't tall. <laughs> well. Screw uh, <laughs> you, Hans. <laughs> but, he's, but he's beautifully Aryan. <laughs> I have a wonderful beard, and there's nothing you can say about it. Yeah, so true. mutton chops, mutton chops. Like you said, it uh, came out with 2018. I believe. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, technically, uh, the original technically. idea was sort of conceived. Oh, in, the intro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the original idea was conceived in December 2017, but with me and Carlos, we were roommates at the time. Carlos plays chops. He unfortunately couldn't be here because he's a busy, busy, successful man. But we were like roommates, and we and we, he really wanted to shoot something. He was like, "We gotta just come up with something. Like, like maybe we could do like a duo thing or like a comedy thing or whatever." And it wasn't until he said, "What if you set? What if we set something in the apocalypse?" And I was like, "Oh shit! Like, yeah, we we've had this like year. How many year long drought chase in California? How long was that drought? Like eight years? Or yeah, something? yeah, I think it's about eight years." <laughs> something like that yeah and yeah when he said apocalypse i was like yeah what, no actually the drought's officially done <laughs> but really? um, yeah yeah they, yeah everywhere we filmed down there in uh in what, what was the vasquez rocks it all turned green after like the rain we got i think a year and a half it, ago even ransburg just bloomed with a bunch of flowers like like not even ha- yeah not even a year after uh, the, the, really? we filmed it right before the drought ended yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, when Carlos said, why don't we do something like set the apocalypse, my mind like clicked. I was like, wait, that's easy. We don't have to build a set. We just go out to the dry desert. And then I just got to make two cool costumes. And so that's when I approached it, the idea to chase. So like the kind of the idea of it, was that like, uh, like the vibe I get from it is you guys are kind of doing like a live action version of like those old school animated shorts, you know, like little five minute animation, with Popeye, things like that, where you just kind of took like little stories and. You did like little short, like they all string together in their own way, but you could watch any one of them at any time and still they're, they're all separately enjoyable. Is that kind of what you were going for? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that when Hans and I like first started to piece together sort of like what we ultimately decided the aesthetic of the show to be from a visual and from a like a performance standpoint and like... um Hans, you know, he's always coming at it with his voice acting background. So he's able to really embody the character physically the same way he does with the voice, which is very like commanding and full of mannerisms and, and complexity. And, and he brings that to his physical performance. And actually, Carlos impressed both Hans and I with how far he came with his physical acting to to match in his own right, you know, the sort of physical character mannerisms and and complexities that that hans also brought to his i don't know like and then to add tomar in with the uh with the longer form content like that was (laughs) i mean if you guys have seen the land of water tomar you 
absolutely do the exact same but on such a mellower uh wave length and i don't know like what did did you and hans like kind of work on that prior like i know that you know we all sort of like rehearsed a bit before the shoot but i i feel like you showed up already as a character as well so <laughs> i i don't think uh do is that much of a stretch for me but hans and I, I, I remember us rehearsing it like maybe once or twice uh we we went to like a little park and just went over the lines and just kind of did like a like a you know a, an informal like rehearsal where you know, we didn't have costumes or anything. We just were kind of walking through the lines. But yeah, that, that we were trying to nail it this. It didn't feel like a ton of preparation. Yeah, well, yeah, no, because um, <laughs> one of the approaches I went with, at least specifically for Do, is um, actually all the characters in a way. But uh, we, when we went to the park, I remember we were going over that very difficult scene, Chase, when while Do is walking and Mutt's trying to sell something to him. We were trying to, like, make no, sure we, right. we hit those beats. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but then I remember... Uh, Tomar, when, when remember when I went to your apartment and we were doing costume fittings, I remember you were kind of doing like a lot of things like uh, like, oh, what if I slouch or you know, what if I have more of like a turtle walk or you know, like, do you know what right, I mean? Like, right. I remember, I remember uh-huh. you, you were finding those little like, uh, little details and stuff about them that I think kind of sort of what I like about Munchops it was fun is that even like all the characters, even and then like me and Dex had had a whole when I was putting together the costume for him he was kind of finding like the, the frantic sort of desperate man in the desert sort of physicality of it like we you're right to point out that it is very much like animated because like i wanted to kind of harken back to the uh no pun intended man harken <laughs> i want to harken back to the uh to the uh the old days of like mimes uh like you know we we like to say something looks cartoony but you have to remember like looney tunes was getting inspired by three stooges and charlie chaplin and like like right, right, th- that right. kind of clown like performance is what i would call it you know for short for a shorthand it's like this yeah, very you see a lot physical... of that because you guys do a lot of yeah you do a lot of physical comedy like it's really not till later on that you guys have more than a couple lines in each each short like chase was saying like the physical performances are what make it so fun oh my god chops is like hands down my favorite character just he's i don't know <laughs> he's so physical he's he's the perfect straight man to to your mutt <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> i love him <laughs> yeah no i i think the chemistry like really kind of came out like real well and there's a specific moment. I don't know if you remember this, Chase. Um, when I really think it all kind of started clicking, because one of the approaches we did was um, being that this was going to be so visual. We started the first thing we shot was that intro, which has no dialogue, right? Well, if you think about it, dude, we actually did um, our. I don't know, like I think the green screen shoot that we did, where it was just the stills. You remember that? This, oh yeah. Oh, that's right. I mean, yeah, you're right. Uh, Chase was really smart to set up this basically like a like a photo photography session where once I had finished the costumes, Chase was kind of like taking different pictures of different angles and sort of that's where you, I, that's actually when I remember we, I felt like we started practicing what the chemistry going into the shoot was going to be like because it was you directing right. us, you know? And we were doing these like still frames. And you, you, you taught me and Carl's very important things, which is like the silhouette. Can you explain that? Because I think that's really freaking interesting. Like the, oh, the uh, yeah. imagining like a space or so, what was that? How did you phrase that? Sure, sure. Well, the thing that a lot of actors, like when it comes to screen acting, forget about is that the stage changes every time the shot changes. So, you know, if if you're doing a close up, it's because we really are wanting to see what's in your eyes, you know, from a character standpoint. But if we're, you know, 20 yards away, it's because we want to see how you cross a space, you know, or basically when you're coming down to a compositional standpoint, when you're framing up a subject, you're taking real estate of the eye, you know, from the frame. Mm -hmm. And so having those shapes be as informative as possible and kind of lean into the cartoon aspect. You know, if you, uh, I know that it was mentioned like the old school cartoons and, and, and I think that to Hans's point, we're also fusing that vaudeville and I mean, ultimately, I guess that's what those old cartoons were really pulling from, too, was the vaudeville. So, But mm-hmm. to take the graphic aspect of the silhouette and what we did with the costumes, like, let's say with Chops, you know, um, I think the very first concept, was he in, like, overalls or something like yeah, that? Yeah, in the like original, I, he, in the early concept art or the costume designs I drew, yeah, he almost looked kind of like a Mario character with, like, overalls or, like, a mechanic or something. Right, and, and we were talking about how, well... Mutt has this really like snaky aesthetic to him and and he's Mm -hmm. got these like very angular features and so we're like okay well what if we like bring in sort of sort of more chiseled silhouette so like a kind of a 
more squared off and and chunky silhouette and so we put him in this giant jacket yeah. you know we simplified his head by putting the fighter the, what is it like the, the, flight the fighter pilot helmet? flight cap yeah totally like simplified the shape of his head and then we gave him this big turtle shell of a of a backpack <laughs> and and we even added the uh, antenna so we get yeah. that secondary movement and this sort of like this animation mindset going into it okay jump and then land okay now the antenna is swaying back yeah and like forth. i remember going into the backpack and designing it so that when carlos or chops would jump like the backpack would have a kind of squishy bouncy movement to it and then when he would yes. t- when he'd turn around his coat would flop like a like like floppy dog ears or something you know like yeah, a, right yeah we, it's, it was cool and then that same thing i when i when we in that photo shoot because that was kind of when we were finally testing the costumes I mm-hmm. learned so much that that's when I kind of with do was like trying to play off like how his coat and everything. And, and then that, that's when I got the idea for the staff. Remember the staff, Tomar? It's like a big pool. It's like a pool cleaner net. Uh-huh. And I had all these dangly things and stuff. Cause like so much of your character is so, yes. so motionless that there, there still needed to be a little more motion somewhere, you know? Um, right. And the robes, the robe too, like added to that sort of secondary movement that the, 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 the fish was it fish hooks that you had is that what it was oh uh, yeah fish hooks i had to actually file them down so they were fish hooks hanging off the the what's it called the because uh, i didn't I, want i, I didn't ha- want to lose an eye <laughs> i ha- i have to add i actually my shirt actually got stuck on what those fishing hooks like at least four times oh really by just <laughs> being there oh man that's funny <laughs> oh man there's, yeah they're still there's still hooks <laughs> no, and, then, and then like uh dex's character for example like um since the character is like this desert deprived like uh, you know you has to he has to look like how long has this guy been out here i made sure he had very floppy clothing so that his his limbs would come out looking more skinny in comparison <laughs> <laughs> to really well, Dex push that. added that floppy performance to it too. Like his limbs are just as floppy as his costume, which makes it kind of like all the more visually confusing and funny. And mm-hmm. reminds me of like the speed lines in cartoons too. You know, yes. when they move yes. like, I remember you told me don't shave your beard before you arrive here. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just gotta, gotta, you gotta have that like what is it, strangler beard or whatever. Straight, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, Hans, can you kind of preface for the like audience, sort of like what Dex's experience was going into it and also oh my God. like what we put him through for the show. Oh God, yeah. So here's the, here's the setup. Dex actually appeared on the last short we ever did of Mutton Chops. It's just after Land of Water. Um, and what we did was uh, we had well, like one more idea for like a funny short, you know, and uh, but we had it set. It had to be set in like the sand dunes. So we, we uh, actually, it was kind of funny. We had like an eight hour road trip trying to hunt down dunes. And then we told, we finally went to basically the death valley dunes now the death valley (laughs) death valley dunes i think it was like 114 degrees or more like but um dex came from sweden and so i feel i feel terrible because i I plucked a viking out of the snow and plopped him into the sand you know (laughs) there there are two things that i want to say about this okay so so go ahead please yeah when when you first um, asked me if i wanted to be in modern shops i was like oh cool he's gonna is he gonna make me like a a viking since i'm from sweden no you sent me this fucking potato sack wearing lanky ass bastard and i was like of course he chose that (laughs) the reason why i I chose you i'll tell you right now is because my favorite thing about your videos is are those like really kind of snappy like uh physical he always starts his videos like his video game reviews dex has his own really cool channel where he reviews uh video games but they always start off with these very like physical like he moves in a way like like out of a ren and stimpy cartoon or something and (laughs) and i just thought like man for this like kind of desperate frantic guy like i need someone who can really physically like be frantic and and you know dynamic and so i knew that if i just threw him into this into the big uh, sandbox he'd he'd have fun and pull it off and and i think i think he knocked it out of the park not only did you drop him in the we dropped him in the desert we (laughs) when we got there we were like okay let's we got over the first dune and we were like okay this is cool and then it was like ah i was like "Ah, we can still see the parking lot (laughs) So we we probably went I want to say like twelve or thirteen dunes in to the yeah. to the desert to to like film that. Yeah, we walked for a good fifteen minutes at least. At least yeah, I, re- yeah. I remember you say we, I don't want there to be any footsteps. Yeah, that's one of the <laughs> things that's hard is we have to make sure not to have footsteps because it is a little bit of a tourist attraction. Yeah. Yes, oh, well, yeah. that's true. Yeah, we had to kind of go away from where most of the people were going, basically to the more dangerous, desolate place. <laughs> 
And we came <laughs> unprepared as hell. And we went so far that there was actually a point where it was kind of hard to remember, wait, where's the car? Like, and we actually, I mean, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what the weirdest part was? Remember when you guys, uh, you and Carlos were going to film your stuff mm -hmm. and I was sitting like on the other side of the hill, which was like, oh, yeah, by, like by a, by a oh, bush that was half your size. Yeah, yeah by, by a little bush. And I was holding my little umbrella. That was, was not an umbrella at that oh, yeah, point. Let me preface but, this real but, quick. We, but we were like, I don't know, like 50 yards away from each other. And you you could whisper and I could hear you. Yeah, sound in the dunes is super surreal. Like you could see yeah. someone like a speck in front of you, but because of the way I guess the bowl is shaped between dunes, you could like, yeah, you can just talk like this. And the guy's like a football field away. <laughs> yeah, you could hear what? him. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no shit talking on that set. <laughs> and then, okay, wait, really quickly, uh, on the guest star blunders, uh, of, like the torments that we guys put you through, what are the things <laughs> I felt bad about you, Tomar, when we were filming, is I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Tomar likes to shave his head. If he shaves his head, he's going to have, and he has his beard, it's going to totally look like the, like that, you know, mystic, uh, you know, guru guy, you know, that's going to be perfect. And then I feel like there was, we had like two shoot days and one entire shoot day, we forgot to put sunblock on your bald head. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I got oh. genuinely burned. Oh. I mean, we, we were, we were in Death Valley, but we were still... It was Mojave you know, Desert, that one. Those are the train yeah, tracks. It the mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I remember, like, the next day, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you didn't put any sunblock on your head? <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, I had makeup. Or, I think you did makeup the first day that looked sunburned, <sighs> so it didn't. It, there wasn't really much inconsistency. Do you want to know what the makeup was, Tomar? What it was, was just, it? I just rubbed sand on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sand, I gotta ask this: in, in the uh, the first intro you guys did uh, with the the kiddie pool bit, where you where you have the delusion oh, yeah. that it's water, how, how much sand did you guys eat filming that? And how many takes did you do? For reference, me and Carlos <laughs> ate an ant <laughs> each. <laughs> well, that was the funny part about that. I told Carlos you each me, ate an ant. Yeah, yeah. Me and Car me and uh, Chase were kind of like I was sort of the stand-in, right? While Chase was setting up those sort of uh those sh the, the 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 shots by the kiddie pool which by the way we all had to hand in a uh, hand breathe in <laughs> oh, all the air yeah. <laughs> not hand breathe like hand yeah, we, breathe <laughs> <laughs> but uh so we almost passed out like six times forget inflating that thing but uh but so i was the stand-in sort of set, so that chase could set up the shop the shot and then um Ch i told carl's chops like hey ch uh wh wh while we're setting this up can you get some sand and try to make it like find some like finely ground soft sand you know um and and so he got a bucket and he went out and then when he came back we had this like soft sand that would go poof really well on camera you know not kind of thick grainy sand and so we're like a few shots in of like throwing this stuff in our face and then carl's look at the sand that he got and it's just full of ants. Oh my god! <laughs> so I was like, "This is a real mud chops moment that happened behind the scenes." Chops went and grabbed the soft set of an ant hill. It, it was it was basically almost dirt, like if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was very powdery. It was it was amazing. It was delicious. Um, but. <laughs> Full of nutrition. Yeah, <laughs> Hans, you nailed the pacing too. Like I didn't, I didn't do like any sort of digital retiming of the. Of oh, the, oh, the water splashes to the face that cuts yeah, to the, the dirt. Yeah, the splashes to the face. Well, that was what was cool. Is um, yeah. you counted for me while uh, you filmed me. You were like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for the water, and then for the dirt. So uh -huh. that all we had to do is just. It's literally a cut. That's just a cut. There's no trick there. <laughs> yeah. 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 It fun. took me a minute to catch that too, because like. I didn't, I didn't, you can't see the cut at all. So my mm. thought was you guys just had like one bucket of water beside a bucket of sand and I'm watching it again. I go, wait, that sand's not turning to mud. That's two shots. Exactly. How the fuck? That, that was, was the trick. Truth. That was the trick. That was we were the like, trick. We, we, so smooth. We, we can't have it muddy, you know, cause then the illusion or, or I guess since the point is he's having an illusion, <laughs> it would right, be broken. The comedy of it. <laughs> no, yeah, it exactly. would be broken. It's like, this is not a mirage. This is just like water to, you know? It's a good throwback, like you said, to like all that vaudeville stuff, like all the little camera tricks those old school things did, because you didn't have like high end special effects back then. Like clearly, when you watch your videos, you guys had access to some cool effects, but I, I see you you only use them when you needed to, and I, I really appreciate that. exactly. Yeah, and I gotta freaking yeah, I gotta just tell, tell you right now, Chase, that Chase is the guy who's not only the director, but he did all of the digital effects wizardry, you know. And honestly, he did an amazing job. We had some good help with the robots in. Uh... 
Land of oh, Order. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Actually, those two guys uh, worked on Satina. Uh, that's where I met them. The the guys who made the robots. They were really cool. Which was on that was on the previous podcast I was on here with the Satina people. But um, oh, nice. That's I think the philosophy of how we approach the effects or, and everything is like I kind of when I approached Chase with this idea, I was like, let's just kind of go back to the roots of film of like it's just like three guys and a camera you know and it's like when you watch like buster keaton stuff it's like they just got a camera and they went under the hills and it's like can i jump off this tree and land here and not break my leg you know like you know what i mean <laughs> so we had that more kind of bare bones uh, approach sort of to the philosophy and chase honestly is a very like i would call slick uh, director like i think you have a sort of like real elegance to your style normally and this is a departure from your usual style like uh, I wanted to know. Sure, I, I wanted yeah. to know how you kind of like you sort of retooled your approach to some stuff, you know, like maybe like how you felt working with this different flavor. For sure. I mean, first off, like thanks. <laughs> That's very kind of you <laughs> to say, man. Like, um, uh, but more so, um, whenever we talked about the project, I had kind of like always wondered, like, okay, why do people? sort of avoid certain projects that are outside of their field of comfort. And then sort of like I was at a moment in my life where I was kind of like wondering that as I was exploring other, you know, avenues. But you came to me with this idea and I was thinking like, man, this is so far out of my comfort zone, but it is also so at its core, like of the craft, you know, and like wanting to make something that is just very potently what it is. And it seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to really like lean into again like the aesthetic of film and uh you know i have a physical acting background as well and that's why i feel like you and i were able to really have carlos like really focus whenever he decided to like step up his physical acting game to meet yours as a character and every time like he did it it was always getting better and always getting more on the nose of what uh like chops ended up becoming you know yeah. what i mean to me my moment when i saw um chops like carlos i, I actually think it's when me and and carlos i when i think the crescendo of like we got this we now know what this is because we set it up so that we're kind of like as we film this we're learning how to play these characters in a way and the moment for me was in treasure paper the fourth short that final wide shot gag where uh, I get up and and I say silky smooth and this and that and Chops is like wait what happened to the treasure map and he goes you know that shot like <laughs> it's just the way his physicality the way he's like wait a minute what about the it's like you you can hear the conversation yeah not a single word it's just like without a we word should, we should get <laughs> and then and then that uh nope. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez, oh God. It smells like it smells like crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that moment I, when I remember because we, you know, we did that shot a few times when we looked back at the uh, and you showed us on the on the on the on the viewfinder. Right. I, I was like, we nailed it. Like it was one wide shot, and the the pacing of the of the back and forth was good. Chops' physical expression of the whole thing. I was like, okay, we're, we we're getting this. You know, we got this. You know, like this. I think is finally clicked. And this was before Land of Water. We shot the whole thing chronologically, by the way. In case people were wondering, yeah, I mean, we, uh, I think Land of Water, we might have shot out of order, scene from scene, but we, in terms of installments, yeah, we shot them, yeah, in order, yeah. So from from episode one on, were those all were those all like similar locations, or did you guys bounce around quite a bit for all of those? <laughs> so uh, yeah, for the first, what we called the little Max. So the little, the idea of these like we had these. I don't know, Hans. You want to speak to this? I feel like we, I feel our, like you'd our, probably explain it a little. Yeah, bit our working, our working, um, our, our kind of our work lingo was little Max are the shorts that we can post on Twitter or like you know they're like one minute bits or two minute bits, you know. And we call them right. little Max because little mutt and chops. And then the big Mac was Land of Water, and that's when we were going to go 4K widescreen, kind of almost right. like. This is like our, our Lawrence of Arabia, you know? Cinema scope, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so so that was the Big Mac, and that's the one where Tomar's in, right? And the Little Macs are the shorter ones. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, Chase. Like, I actually would like to hear from your end what it was like to find all the different locations. For oh, well, I mean, uh, whenever you had talked about uh, Vasquez Rocks, like... I had always like remembered it from those old Star Trek, you know, or like the the very popular like Star Trek uh, where Captain Kirk is like hoisting the rock over his head to like smash the alien or whatever. And uh, I don't know, I, I think the location really inspired the aesthetic too. And ironically, with that first photo shoot that we were talking about earlier, earlier I didn't think about how that might have subconsciously influenced us ultimately choosing to turn the sky like a turquoise green or like a green, you know, depending on how toxic the air is or, you know what I mean? So. Um, but really kind of honing in on that 
aesthetic and like figuring out, okay, even from the landscape standpoint, now we have all of these options and, and opportunities for silhouette of landscape. And Vasquez Rocks, if anyone is not familiar with it, all of the rock formations that you see uh, from the intro to all, all of the Little Macs, uh, the shorter form context, uh, they're all filmed in Vasquez Rocks. And the formations are just incredible. They look otherworldly. And, and fortunately, we were able to use different techniques uh, from miniatures to full CG um, implement, implemented background objects, you know, to really uh, obscure the background even more. But uh, ultimately, I think that most of the charm of the environment comes from the fact that we're having kind of like this very stylized direction across the board from the costumes to the landscape to the what we ultimately call the toxic wash which is like this yellow green tint tinge to the whole subject matter because of this green you know green sky purple at night which you know Hans like love to reminisce about that yeah no one of the things that what i liked about when we when when i talked to chase about coming up with this toxic wash that he called which is the aesthetic of like the green and yellow uh sort of effect on mutton chops the reason why it was important to nail that is because when you look at like the just the raw footage when it's not color corrected something about just making the sky green immediately makes your brain go okay apocalypse and if not it looks just like what are they weird cowboys or you know like in a <laughs> desert <laughs> you know what i mean so so that it's like gave us so much of an advantage of like okay as long as we make this give this this toxic wash whatever distorted rocks and po things we point at now it looks more like destruction or poison or or you know you know like apocalypse than then it, mm -hmm. it does like oh like there's gonna be a like a cowboy poking out the rock with a rifle about to shoot you you know like it gives you a different feeling right. and um right. one of the th one of the things i loved about kind of exploring vasquez rocks with you is is we storyboarded these very clearly but when you storyboard we don't know exactly where we're going to shoot it. So there was a lot of like an adaptation going on. And that's why I really liked Chase with his very cinematic eye. He know, he knew the storyboards inside and out. He knew what they needed to have to make them work. But then Chase would like spot like little blobs of rocks and ledges here. And I'd be like, Oh, okay. I guess that'll work. And then when you see where he pointed the camera and how it works, it's like, Oh yeah. You just brought the storyboards to life in a way where you just kind of have to find it and explore and be like, maybe that ledge is going to work here. Maybe that angle is going to give me enough high height for, you know, for the, for the angle we need, you know? Stuff. Yeah. For the one where Carlos is lifting you up, you know, up the ledge, we couldn't find a ledge that really worked for practicality of, you know, having him hoisting you up for, you know, yeah, like we, that was actually hour. really hard to find. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was, that was really hard to find a ledge that's perfectly high enough for it to be so that he's hoisting me, but it's also not too high so that it looks stupid that they're trying to go over this dumb ledge, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I think that's a perfect too, like way to, to talk about, um, kind of like the camera trickery we use with, uh, with a lot of, a lot of it, you know, um, because that rock ultimate or that ledge ultimately was like a slanted rock that because we shot it from below, it looked like it was a continued cliff face. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You remember that? Yeah. And that and you were able to hoist yourself more on the rock than on Carlos. Mm -hmm. I think even though I know it was heavy as hell anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but we did it. We did a lot of stuff like that where like um, there's a shot. Uh, what is the um, I'm totally blanking on the the names of the little max right now. All of a sudden diving rock. Um, Yes, no. diving rod. Thank you. Okay. When, whenever uh, the night scene in diving rod, and you, uh, mm -hmm. you guys are laying, you guys are sleeping next to each other, and there's a bit where, you know, you steal the blanket, and he pulls the blanket back and throws him, throws you over him with ease. And the way that we shot that, because obviously, actually trying to roll over each other in this comedic cartoon-like manner, you know, we didn't have a wire system or anything, so we just leaned you guys up against a rock wall, and you guys just held the blanket up to you, yeah. and yeah, we kind of performed like a little ballet. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, so we were nice. standing for that. We're not actually laying on the rock. We're actually vertical. <laughs> wait, wait, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And then what we did was we found like a little pocket of the rock that was good enough to just like rest my hat on there, so it looks like there's things on the on the ground laying on it, but it's just stuck on the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 It's, but see, it's like those little simple ho old Hollywood tricks. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I've been like, tricked. Yeah. But then we we found we, and then we found the cliff that like was the implied place that you fell off, and like we didn't think that we could believably do a visual effect of you falling off a cliff. So instead, what we did is we did multiple takes of throwing your hat over the ledge. Yeah. So we get that 
when we cut, we get that secondary. Okay, his hat is falling down the ledge because he just fell down the ledge. Yeah, kind your brain of thing. fills in the gap with a, just enough with the right signal. Yeah, and Carlos's facial expressions really sell it too. He's just oh, ah, every thump. He's like Ooh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like uh, Carl uh, Chops is the heart of the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of how I, I like to see his character, and then like Mutt is the brains, like <laughs> or whatever, like the, the, the manic brains, but um, the self-serving Carl- brains. <laughs> J- uh, Tomar, I, I actually want you to talk to the audience a little bit about what it was like being dragged for miles in a potato sack. Oh yeah, no, that easily, easily my favorite part of shooting <laughs> was being dragged around in a potato sack with my with my with my shoes just hanging out. Yeah. Those are some sweet Crocs, by the way. What was it? My socks and Crocs. Oh, yeah, you, you like the Crocs and socks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the Crocs, yeah. The whole idea of the of those iconic Crocs was that was that there would be something to signify my body being in that bag. You know, I, I was fortunate <laughs> enough I didn't have to. Right. Be. <laughs> yeah, that's I, we had to design that into the character because th- for half of the movie he's dead in a bag and like his foot sticking out, and it's like you have to just without explaining it or like just immediately know that's him. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's so many layers to his to your to your costume, Tovar, too, where like. The crocs were were sort of essential to feeding that water theme too. You know, like the entire costume. If you look at it, he looks like this sort of like Dalai Lama figure of the lifeguards or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Like a lifeguard. Yeah. And he always talks about the water being a rectangle, so you just assume they're going to like an old public pool or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> right. the journey to the land of water. The whole idea is like if you kind of like look into the nooks and crannies of what he's talking about, which sounds like nonsense, he's describing an abandoned water park. And so he's basically like going back to his like religious, like an abandoned water park that has become a, com- a community, like a religious community, like around <laughs> this water park. Like, light, what, like what this. Yeah. Like, like if, if you can't yeah. swim, you have li- uh, saviors of life that make you float and stuff you know like <laughs> yeah you, wasn't it like ring of life or something like that yeah yeah, so, yeah like, ring, 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 wings you can hold on to that float saviors of life <laughs> <laughs> that's my best tomar <laughs> saviors of life we call them yeah, yeah. everybody's favorite yeah, lines yeah, yeah, like yeah. the trespassers will be shot on sight line everybody loves that <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh just so rambling like, the, the guy's so chill and then he busts that line out yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just supposed to be like an unreliable kind of like guide, you know? Like, you're like, you're, you're just when you get comfortable, you're like, wait, what was that? You know? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> of course it's unreliable. He dies halfway through. And I, actually, uh, Tomar, your character was the first introduction to bl- of the color blue into Mutton Chops also. Because yep. like, yep. the sky isn't even blue. And, and so the theme of water also, we were trying to give remember- you that sort of like. With my big blue bathrobe. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And we got a lot of cool, like, cowboy shots of it just, like, billowing in the wind just ever so slightly. (laughs) So was naming him Dude just kind of like a way to mix the idea of water, but, like, also Dude? Is that what that was kind of supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's supposed to sound like dude, like, but it's also water driven. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, drop. Right. little known fact, uh, I remember me and Dex actually came up with a name for his character. It's in the credits. Like, obviously, since it's a, like a silent role and like his name isn't uttered, but his, his, his character's name is Ding. And, um, well, can you explain how we got to that, Dex? <laughs> um, we went through a lot of different, what, what, what do you, what we wanted to do was to like, uh, get a Swedish word for like, dirt or something um and it was like dirt or like manure or something like that mm-hmm. and then i came to the conclusion that um like a pile of manure is basically like it even it has a slang in swedish i think it's a slang at least and it's dunga and then you were like yeah ding ding <laughs> ding ding and i'm like okay ding. let's go with that i guess and it's spelled d-y-n-g uh d-y-n-g because like like kind of like dying <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> I thought that was fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. But um, Tomar, what was it? Because uh, you don't oft- often go into live action stuff. Like, what? How did you feel like going? Because you're an amazing voice actor. But like, what was it like? Not only having to go, like, you know, go more into the the visual acting, but then the in the desert. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I had a lot of fun. You guys made it easy. Like uh, working with Hans and Chase and Carlos at the time. Like. I felt like I just like had to show up and and everything was just like they they knew what they were doing they were very prepared. I I feel I wish I had more training for, you know, on camera acting. I'm sure there's more I could have done to help, but uh, but I I, I, I 
I still had I had a lot of fun doing it, and I just tried to do what I thought the character would do at the you know at the yeah. core of it. It's like, yeah, I, I agree. Like this, despite the torture I went through in those sand dunes, <laughs> uh, never been to an, a desert, let alone sand dunes. Uh, it was really easy to. Uh, to shoot the stuff you gotta dex you gotta tell them yeah. what happened to your foot <laughs> <laughs> the, okay so chase wanted me to uh what was it run down this huge sand hill and then run back up in the same take <laughs> yeah so so he he shouts at me to run to start running i run down all all by the way one of the best shots of the entire series i agree i I agree that i was like i was like this is this is like lawrence of arabia (laughs) (laughs) so i i run down already halfway through i'm out of energy and i i get to stop for three seconds once i get down and then they want me to run back and i i i do do that i do exactly that i run back up but halfway through i literally have no energy left and i just drop face first onto the sand starfish and i'm just i'm just laying there i didn't even hear a cut i just lay there and just and you, I my just breath. recently saw the, the and, footage and I hear Chase going like, yeah, I think he's done. <laughs> I'm thinking right now I'm thinking, what was I thinking right there? Like how could I have not known that this poor that this poor sweet man I think an was... important, important important thing to point out is that because of the, the angle, we we just saw this really cool sand dune and Chase went, go over there around and run down that hill, right? We were looking at it from in front, but apparently it had a perfectly vertical <laughs> slope. So we were asking, like, we didn't know that we were asking him to run up a vertical wall of sand. <laughs> we didn't know how steep it was. Exactly. It was basically climbing. You're a real trooper. But it's, it, it yeah, was man. like, we filmed your f- uh, takes first, mm-hmm. if I remember. Yeah. Uh, and then when you, when you and Carlos were done, you uh, went away to the nearest gas station to get more water. Mm-hmm. Because we didn't have any of it. The only well, bottle we, did, we had left, they, it was boiled by the sun. It was hot. It was like tea. It was like, it was, it didn't, yeah, it was. It didn't help it was. at all. So you, you guys went ahead to get some more water while Chase right. and I were doing the shit. And, we, we filmed a few more and, things. Yeah, so we filmed, my stuff, we filmed my stuff and we were basically done. So And we were like, maybe we should like go to the parking lot. Because we didn't have anything left to film. And halfway, remember that fifteen-minute walk <laughs> yeah. across the dunes. We, we have a thirty-minute walk, minute back. walk and I, and back. I, Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> like that, you know, like I'm Swedish. I'm not used to <laughs> that kind of weather, especially not in the sand dunes. Yeah. My first time in the sand dunes. Poor, and halfway man. through, we see Hans and Carlos coming over with water bottle, bottles, and I'm like chasing them with my big swollen hands like <laughs> so i he didn't need to I act got anymore a bottle of water i got a bottle of water poured the entirety of that bottle over my face and my body and grabbed the gatorade and drank that shit up in like 10 seconds and it still wasn't enough yeah and then we looked at your, and then we looked at your foot and he had a giant Damn. blister yeah. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh, really? yeah. I was like, how? Did, it was on my toe, my big toe. It's like, how did oh. this happen? Oh yeah, sandals. So, yeah, sandals <laughs> and oh, hot it. boiling sand, like you know, and climbing vertically. Yeah. And climbing up. vertically. Well, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, I thought like I remember. Okay, so I had my sandals right, and I remember the beaches in Spain. I was like, the sand is really fucking hot over there, <laughs> and I was wondering how is this gonna work. But luckily, it wasn't as hot as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. So I was really lucky there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the blister, you, you guys were like, this is the first time we had to bring out the first aid kit. Yeah, but we had were, one and we cleaned it up. You were proud of, yeah, you were proud of my injury. What's well, it's a freaking <laughs> battle scar, man. Dude, you <laughs> have no <laughs> idea how many bruises I got rolling, yeah, you, rolling around yeah, and you, shit. You, your fucking lips were smiling to the corners of your face when you brought that first aid kit to me. Like, I was like, <laughs> oh no. I was like, I was like, ah, we are prepared for this. <laughs> yeah. I knew I wasn't an idiot for bringing this. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. No, and then um, and then uh, I mean, we all we all had our, uh, our suffering. Suffering. I had to lay on the, on like this whole shot in that in that short of like mutt laying on the sand. I had I was like laying starfish face to the sun, angled to the sun on the slope of the sand, and I had to just like uh, I almost passed out like three times. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but man, that this is what's cool to me about this sort of thing. It's like versus something like animation where you you know you you're kind of like sitting like a monk in a studio and you're kind of or or in a desk you know going out there it's like it really is an adventure man it really is an adventure i mean that's there's so many great like memories i i guess i have of of cool like you know the like, feats we accomplished you know <laughs> like yeah definitely <laughs> and even just like with like staying in that airbnb like you me carlos and tomar like for land of water even just the trips that we would all take out i mean we went to the desert the, i mean we went to uh vasco or not we went to vasco's like what three days total or something like that and yeah. then when we went to randsburg that was like uh another like three days i yeah. think right or yeah, two and a half i guess it's not like, more yeah yeah and i was really sick that weekend remember you know everything's like crazy yeah. now about being sick but i was actually really sick that yeah, weekend. no i remember yeah so Dude. that's right yeah so we did all kind of suffer through those like... <laughs> yeah no i mean you had like a fever and shit while we were shooting line of water i think and you were in the heat yeah. yeah, but um, time. <laughs> yeah, good times, good times, good times. Um, I remember we also almost lost our camera to a train. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so we went to these tracks, right? That like no trains ever fucking pass by, you know. In all of the shoots we had, literally, this happened maybe three shots away. It was from like finishing. a rail car graveyard, it, right? It was like, that whole it was like, area. I think of it like a rail car parking lot right so they would not really move much <laughs> right um but there was one we were with it, i think we had like our storyboards and a whatever and the body bag of 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 tomar on the tracks uh, <laughs> oh, and uh we were setting up a shot and so you have to remember like this is a, a think of the horizon the, we wanted it that spot because the horizon looks like it's infinite because think of it like this there's like a kind of a, f a f like a flat plateau that then around this area it kind of goes slightly down and descends so we couldn't see this train coming and also we're like discussing the shot this and that and also wah, wah, uh, we turn and this train's coming up over the slope and it, we, then we turn and we see the body bag and all that stuff i turned to chasing carlos i think yeah and then like nobody's doing anything so i just freaking run and I just start throwing everything <laughs> off the, freaking, the tracks and it's <laughs> luckily the slowest movie train i've ever yes, seen it was like, only going like fucking 10 miles an hour or something but you know 20 yeah, years it, it was still like, oh my fucking god! Yeah, yeah, moment. Yeah. Just, <laughs> do we just let it kind of go over the stuff, or what do we? Nope. Ah, it was great. It was great. You guys always see you like a, a director's version where there's like little pop up videos, and there's like this is where Tomar was almost killed by a train. <laughs> <laughs> no, thankfully, I don't think anybody was ever like in da in danger. You know. No, right? no, no, oh, no, no, I was, I was, yeah, you were, <laughs> I guess, I suppose that's true, yeah. yeah, well, maybe, maybe, maybe the seals, right, maybe the seals could have eaten me and Carlos, so in the, in the last shot yeah. of Land of Water, when we're jumping around the ocean, or the water, we shot at a beach, <laughs> Carlos was so scared, yeah. Carlos, rightfully yeah, so, because there was like scared. six seals in the water nearby, in the <laughs> territorial, <laughs> Sure. And you guys were kind of had to be out there a little bit further than we thought you would be to get the um, you guys splashing at the end. Yeah. Remember, because the water was so shallow up until a certain point. Mm -hmm. So I had to like zoom oh, in right. on you guys kind of far out there. Yeah, we almost got you. Yeah. So one thing I was wondering, like you guys have such a consistent style through all the episodes. And I think one of the reasons for that is the consistent and uh, consistency of the lighting. Um, but I'm hearing all these stories, like all these adventures you went on and like the seeking the perfect shot and all that, but it feels like you would only have like a small window to have that perfect lighting. Like, how did you pull all that off, all that adventuring and still get the perfect lighting for all these shots? It's called the sun. It is true well, though. It is true though that the sun was kind of this like, well, we don't have to worry about lighting, but Chase had a good, good trick up your sleeve. Remember when your, your lens that you used? I thought that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, there's an ND filter. Uh, they're called ND filters. They, they can just sort of... Uh, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's basically you yeah, put like, it, it sunglasses on the, on the lens so that it doesn't make blown out harsh light, you know? Exactly. So to get that sort of like what we kind of see is like a cinematic look of like a shallower depth of field that the entire series kind of like tries to maintain, you have to let a lot of light into the camera. But uh, the, the camera can't expose low enough for sunlight often. So if you put these sunglasses on, it can expose it to be that shallow depth of field. But then you also 
don't blow out your sunlight too much. Um, so that that was definitely one of the tricks that we used. But also, you know, we also just kind of were always trying to keep light direction in mind, even if we had to cheat it, you know. So if you bend over uh, and pick up a rock in one location, if you get an undershot of you, the reverse, it might be a mile away in Vasquez Rocks that we got that shot from the underside, you know what I mean, if it was the better composition. Uh, the best example of that is whenever you fell off the cliff side, and we had this idea where, you know, you fell off um, during uh, break time, you fell off the cliff, you fall down, and then we wa we had this idea of Carlos's shadow casting over you, directly over you, like yeah. where that's where he says that's where he says the line, "Can we take a break now?" And I'm like, "What? No!" Right. Like, the the shadow kind of comes over. And we reverse cut. Yeah. Yeah. The shadow comes over, and when we reverse cut, he's the reverse silhouette of him against the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we, we had to rotate the whole scene, you know, how you were laying so that the sunlight would fall directly on you for that shot. And then think of it this way. If you're on a set and you need to move lights to uh, to get the lighting, in this case, since we're using the sun, we would move the, our positions on the ground and on the set to match what we needed off the sun, you know? Right. So you're basically chasing the sun all day just to make sure it's in the right spot. Yeah, we're doing the dance, the sun dance. Yeah. <laughs> so I know, I know a lot of... Sun. Yeah, I know a lot of people filmmakers. They'll they'll just wait for like that perfect like pre dawn sun. They'll do their sh three or four takes, and then they're done for the day. But it doesn't sound like that's how you guys did this. No, we we pinched every bit of daylight we could when we <laughs> would land. And and honestly, too, like uh, you know, we're, we're all new grounds folks, so I'm sure all of us have that like go to sleep at five a.m. and wake up at three p.m. schedule at from time to time. So mm -hmm. it's the like. Night <laughs> Yeah, we had to really be like, okay, we're going to wake our asses up and drive down there yeah. at the ass crack of dawn so that we can use this day to its fullest. And it was very sobering and, and nice. Yeah, it was really cool to kind of... Well, like, the, more, um, the more time you spend in the sun, I guess, the, the, the more you can give Dex heat stroke, I guess. So it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard of this thing, guys. I heard of this thing. It's very important. It's, uh, it's called vitamin D. Right, and apparently a lot of us are lacking it. I didn't know about this. Did I was you? like, "Is this a sponsorship?" Bit? <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Vitamin D. Yeah. Oh. I remember, like, we filmed on a Friday, I think, and then you still had um, shots for Atlanta Water to do. Even though I was done, you guys still had to go out the day after to That's keep on right. filming. Oh well. yeah, I forgot so, about that. We snuck you into our shoot days. Cause yeah, you were, yeah, because yeah, you were visiting. It was like that was the opportune time to have to have that. That's right. I had forgotten yeah. about that, that that we had woven it in. <laughs> wow. Another funny thing was like like when um, I didn't know the exact details of what was going on in Land of Water. I know what like uh, the Tomo was playing uh, do, but uh, when, uh, most of the time when I visit uh, you guys, um, I usually stay at Hans's place, and uh, at that time Hans was rooming with Carlos. And I usually sleep on the couch, and then I was like, I'm just sleeping there. So that, and I'm, I'm opening my eyes, and I look to the corner, and I see this bag with a foot and a croc sticking out of it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our apartment was like, uh, uh, like a, like a prop shop, you know, like it was just yeah, full you just of everything. everything we these, there. Yeah, we had the big mannequins that were wearing the costumes. We had like, I mean, I think I had like storyboards and stuff posted on the wall. We were also, I remember you had yeah, that yeah, dungeon yeah. set. I, I know this was a separate time, but mm -hmm. you had that dungeon set in your apartment oh, for, for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chase, I shot, Chase that. directed that, the dungeon sequences in that, yeah. And I helped. <laughs> yeah, I remember we made the, the, the foam thing, remember? Yeah, Somehow, even though you were across on the other side of the world, Dex, you always ended up being in my house while I'm working on some of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's funny, though, it's if you always... look at that, if you look at that commercial, too, you kind of see the beginnings of this like hyper stylized that was the that soda we... dungeon commercial right yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, soda yeah. dungeon it's Sean Tanner's right. game yeah that's so funny I, yeah no, you're to, right no, to the editor of this episode dig that up so we can link it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely dude, soda dungeon uh, it's on my my YouTube channel that one uh, that but that Chase directed all the dungeon sequences for that because uh, I told him like I want to almost like give it that like uh you know, like the nightmare sequences on like Nightmare Elm Street, or like a lot of those '80s horror movies have like the, like blue and green, or you know, purple, and you know, like the colors are just right. like we're afraid, like neon. You know, like a creepy crawlers commercial or something. Yeah, or like exactly. Sort of goosebumps, even goosebumps like, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh just, yeah. Like the it's like uh like the one in doubt, just put a blue gel for moonlight. You know, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's like almost that kind of a pro like that kind of look for that because it's those those characters are supposed to be like very like '90s. You're, 
like early 90s late 80s kind of like dude bros um, right that was a good example too if we only had that one wall so we had to stage we had to move the action around the wall again too you remember we had to dress mm -hmm. it a little differently and then yeah depending on the how perspective a bit you know Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to the uh, to some warehouse to buy. I don't know the American warehouse brands or whatever, but uh, we went in to buy the, the styrofoam and everything. Just had to cut it up and stuff. And you got you bought one of those like heating pistols or whatever to make that cobblestone texture sort of yeah. And then you bought like moss from Games Workshop or whatever. Yeah, for anyone who's interested in like uh set design or whatever a good easy trick is get like a big sheet of styrofoam and if you get like a blow dryer right well you can get a heat gun which is a little faster but if you just like warm the styrofoam as it's on the floor it kind of like sinks right like it's sort of like slow melt sinks and um you can actually sculpt like patterns and textures onto it and it's really fun and cool and easy and then you just paint it you know but uh, if anyone wants to know that trick, it's pretty useful for backgrounds, especially a lot of people who have like, I don't know, like if you're a Let's player and you want a cool background, you can like make your own, you know? <laughs> yeah, the, just just the one the is, bedroom, whatever. Just do it in a <laughs> ventilated area. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wear, wear a mask. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, we're all used to that now. Um, what's it called? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was just, it was, it was like an awesome adventure. And honestly, like it's been, it was it, like, we have so many memories, you know, for me at least, like, and it was so cool yeah. working with you guys. No, I was going to say, thinking like having Tomar and Dex here, like Tomar, I remember one of my favorite memories with you filming on this was actually uh, the one, one of the only green screen shoots that we did. And that was for, you know, we had this oh, crazy yeah. Oh, yeah. sequence where you're ahead in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> We were all cracking we up. That. I think we were we were doing that. That's at Chris's just me house. sitting on a stool at Chris O'Neill's house. Yeah, <laughs> we were laughing. We're our ass like One of my favorite shots as I was editing this chase was the uh -huh. the low angle shot where uh where he's creepy and he's the moon and the uh -huh. and he says uh maybe you should have dragged me along or something right. that shot the moment he finishes saying it the camera starts shaking you're like Bruh! like we all fucking burst out laughing we're like that's it we got it that's right that's right that's so good um, yeah man and, and even just like okay like I, I need you to like almost do this like weird genie head thing so that we could get you like floating like nodding and stuff like that oh it's just, yeah you just went with it and it, it really ended up working i, I love i love that and oh and the lean up over the over the horizon yeah the, the, like, the just nodding having head? you lean into frame was that, yeah. that was the you just need to believe yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh so with my head in a circle yeah <laughs> believe great. yeah can i say one one little anecdote about about Dex real quick. I don't want to forget this because this is to me one of the funniest things ever. So the there's a gag with Dex is short and I made a prop where it's like an umbrella and the, the joke is he sees his umbrella because he's looking for shade and when he opens it, it's just like gutted. Like it's just sticks, right? You know, and so I got like a little umbrella and I cut it up so that it looks all, all like chewed up and, and it can't cast any shade. And I remember when I came up with this gag, I was like, I hope it like reads because like, I mean, wouldn't that still cast enough shade? I don't know. I, I Whatever. I mean, I, I, I think the joke's funny. Whatever. So we're on set, right? And Dex is sitting by his little bush, right? <laughs> it's like barely any shade and he's waiting for his turn and while we're while chase is shooting us setting up i catch it on my eye and i see dex not on camera like just on his own desperately looking for shade and he actually picks up the umbrella and for real opens it and tries it out to see if it works and it does it and i was like i was so happy i was like i was like okay i'm glad this is an actually like realistic joke like that that is actually a useless umbrella you know but the, the real moment in the script because he hadn't even he he hadn't uh, even shot that yet. It was like we were building up to it, but he's like. <laughs> <laughs> it was actual fear and despair when I actually shot that take. Oh, I wasn't man. acting at all. No, yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that's kind of what I wanted. What I wanted to do with this, like with Tomar, like uh, I'm glad to hear that you said it was professional and everything worked smoothly, and that you, because I wanted to make the characters where it's almost like Tomar, almost like does. It's not like you need to act. You just, it's like there's like a part of you that makes this character that is in you that is going to make this character great, and you just got to bring that part of you out. You know, like that's kind of how I want to approach it. So, so that that's why like to make it so that it's just fun and easy to shoot you know because it's, it's going to be challenging enough that those cha those parts shouldn't be the challenging parts those should be the fun parts you know yeah and like in a sense there's like a reason why there's 150 pokemon in the original game and it's because like you need that variety of character 
like we always imagine mutton chops kind of having this bigger world of full of characters just as intricate as yeah tomar's uh do and and dex's ding dex's Dix is Dix is Dix. That's a big character. You're welcome. We all had a whole well, Check out my do and that character. guy's ding. <laughs> we honestly like, okay, like, if we want to get into kind of pie in the sky, like where would mutton chops go? Um, basically, all my friends that like in, in LA and, and onward, um, like I had character ideas for them, you know, and I kind of wanted mutton chops to be this sort of show where these two characters, uh, mutton chops, run into strangers in the wasteland and like every episode. So it'll be kind of like this character, funny character piece, you know, uh, much like how do or ding and all that stuff. And, uh, man, like the ideas we had, like we, I, I have a whole idea for like a land of water sequel, um, that we, that puts a twist on, uh, on things. And you know what I mean? Like I, like with ding even like we had this running, well, I wanted to make ding like a reoccurring character where every time you meet him, he's in a different, like the next time they see him, he's like this really successful farmer and he's got all this money and food. Food, you know, and then and the next time you'd meet him, it's like he'd just always be fluctuating on like, <laughs> like a like a social <laughs> social status or like I, or like life. I remember, I remember uh, you came up with this idea that if I were to speak, it would be like Rayman from Rayman Two, where it's just gibberish. It's like that, but you're a Oh yeah, like, like, like you're like a like foreigner speak, in this obviously. land, but it would be like a made-up language. Yeah, yeah. It's like hey, right. just, that, that basically would be Swedish chef, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, you know, I don't know what the future of mutton shops has in store, uh, but we designed this to be kind of like its own little complete package, but that could grow, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm satisfied with what we achieved, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Would you guys be, like, looking at maybe just doing some more, like, the little short max and stuff like that here and there, just, just for just for something fun to do every now and then? It's it's or are, you, are you you're more more into like if, if we're gonna do it we're gonna do we're gonna do a whole season type yeah, thing. I, I, the only thing I would worry about personally, I mean Chase, you can tell me whatever you think, but um is, is sure. like with the little max to me, um since they're so simple, right? Um it, it's I I would worry of become making it repetitive and then like kind of like killing it in its cradle before it could ever expand. Does that make sense? Like um I would be worried of that. Of like the like I I I I kind of almost see it as like some kind of ex- expansion would be nice you know like it's it's something that I think asks for like expansion you know well <clears throat> yeah I was gonna say I think if you kind of even just look at the structure of how we did mutton chops in the first place you know we started with this photo shoot then we did what we kind of saw as this like extended intro almost if it was a show you know we we love these cartoon intros to shows so we kind of made a three minute version of a cartoon intro to a show but it's mutton chops you know with all the different antics that they could be going on you know little snippets and then from there we went on to do a five episode you know of of these like single these little maxis like singular one to two minute gags that kind of had a beginning, middle, end, and felt like they told their own little complete comic strip of a story. And then we did the Big Mac, which was the 15 minute, or was it 17 minutes? I don't even remember. Anyways, that uh, general uh, vicinity of time. 15, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, 15. Yeah, the 15 minute, you know, segment. Uh, and, and that was almost going to be like a pilot for something more, you know what I mean? Or, you know, the beginnings of something more. So I, I think for me, uh, what I always wanted with mutton chops was to continue that sort of growth pattern where, you know, we did do kind of that one off uh, with Dex, which I actually love. Uh, you know, I, I view that as a bonus full, full stop, you know, like that was just something where it's like, that was kind of our like, Hey, why don't we just do one more to have that, you know, wandering into the desert or well, how did you put it Hans with, you know, like I think the, the entirety of Dex's episode kind of summed up like, the fate of mutton chops in in a very like complete way yeah. to, to give it that button. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I the if you watch mutton chop the 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 seventh mutton chop short shady needs with Dex, uh, they're stranded in the desert. They're about to die, and mutts like this is the end. You know, like I guess we're just gonna let the sun burn us up or whatever. Like it's supposed to kind of reflect like the show itself in a way. You know, like where like right. well, and, we'll see and at where the end of the day, and, like yeah. Mm-hmm. Right at the end of the day, we'll you know we'll we'll give each other shade in the sun, kind of a thing. And like, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, like, it's yeah, like so, giving so, it a, it's like giving it a death scene without killing it, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I think that it leaves it open ended in in such a fun way where yeah. it still would make total sense to continue the story, but at the mm-hmm. same time, you kind of just know like, all right, well, these guys are just gonna 
wander out into the desert and keep surviving however they know how kind of a thing and i think that's kind of indicative of how we felt too like okay well like we're gonna wait out into the desert of of our own you know continued aspirations and like you know we're obviously still working together on other things and and but uh mm-hmm. i think that that was a good way and like a, a fun even though it wasn't the last shoot we did it was a fun way to send off the audience i guess if you could put it that yeah, way yeah yeah it's like putting a bow on it right like Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. A little curtain the, call. The other thing we're working on, though, is pretty cool, and uh, I think you wanted us to just kind of like give a little bit of a tease as to what what it is, Ooh, right? Audience, <laughs> be, prepared, be prepared to be teased. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do the honors, my friend, because this is a long time coming between you and I. We we the last. You yeah, know, let me preface 14, this. 14, 15 years we've <laughs> known each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our friendship, me and Chase, started as basically when we were, I think, what? Uh, must have been like 15, 16, 14, something like that. In our, right. Like right in the midst of our teens. We, uh, we, uh, we, we kind of, we days. bonded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We bonded on, on, on like a fandom for madness. Like both of us being like, uh, filmmaker, enthusiasts and stuff we we always imagined like a, f- a live action like madness thing even since right we, we both had teens. our own visual like ideas and and concepts mm-hmm. for what we imagined like madness to to be in our own like madness live action universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah and um so what we're working on is a commercial for the upcoming madness project nexus game for steam and uh uh, I had for many, uh, throughout the years, I think you, I think you as well, right? Or uh, talked to, like I mentioned, like the concept of a live action madness and sort of tinkered ideas with, with Matt, Matt Jolly, the creator, uh, and, and even Swain. And so I think when they were making the game, I think it was Swain who approached me and said, do you guys want to do a live action commercial? And I was like, my, <laughs> Cause, cause this is after, this is after they watched some of us, uh, mutton chops after the, after Swain and Matt watched mutton chops. They approached us. And like, you want to do it? We're like, uh, do, 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 do we? We've been wanting to do this since like, <laughs> since, yeah, and it's just about the time our balls dropped, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even now we still have like such a, such a hopeful vision for what, like, cause that, that entire series is just, and what, something that we've always thought like really spoke to, I, I don't know. I don't want to speak on your behalf per se, Hans, but like the, no, speak, the, yeah, go ahead. the spirit of Newgrounds too, is that like madness was, such a graphically complex in its minimalism like design that it really allowed new animators to come in and like play in this space of learning flash and learning how to do fight scenes and you know all this cool animation stuff that was kind of way over any of our heads at the time uh and we really love the idea of like applying that to sort of like a cinematic like universe type of aesthetic mm-hmm. to allow filmmakers to come in and, and make their own uh interpretations but uh, anyways that's big picture stuff right now we're doing our own interpretation <laughs> that's the yeah, but the big picture part in this guy would be like uh, we we kind of dreamed of over the years is like imagine like a madness movie franchise like you know how like alien franchise is directed by different people as it goes like it would be kind of cool like to see like a madness movie franchise where like each movie ha- is, has this like evolving different flavor from one to the next you know like is that what you kind of mean like because it's yeah like one could be more horror one could be more action one could be more i don't know just like cyberpunk one could be more hear me out hear me out Mm -hmm. mad madness cinematic universe yeah i mean kind of yeah (laughs) the the, the mcu exactly yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> the MCU, <exactly. laughs> oh yeah that's what it stands for right that's, yeah you're right yeah. that's the that's the mcu <laughs> trademark trademark it trademark it <laughs> <laughs> trademark, bro. damn it damn it uh, you don't want you don't want the mouse on you with stuff, stuff like that <laughs> but um but what's it called um yeah so like I, I, that's what I, I think i like that uh chase is highlighting is like madness being it so like they're like these little accessible puppets that like a lot of young kids learning to animate can 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 use to then like get the get get started on the uh, on the process of learning animation and so then it's led it itself to be this very collaborative very uh, inspirational kind of thing and it'd be cool if the movies had that kind of vibe to them too and that's that's kind of what we mean about like making it this sort of very and it's also so it's such a like to me madness is such a like free free flowing uh like world you know like it, it's like you can mm-hmm. have your little like your zombies and you can have your like you know your little like uh your giant monster mutant blood like 
beasts and you can have your like glitchy interdimension cosmic horror co- action movie <laughs> yeah cosmic horror action movie would be like that'd be the good like how we would do the first one i guess is like how we set the stage you know which would be especially now with like cg like mm-hmm. i i want to see people push like just unnatural looking kind of like computer generated like horror visuals but like with a with a with a with a with like a big punchy energy so mm, and obviously way. this is just a meager oh. little little commercial you know but uh it's just like for us it's kind of like ooh, we're, we, we get to play we got to play in that it, live play, action yeah that sandbox realm. <laughs> yeah it's really cool and it's a really, fun sandbox to be in for sure yeah and, and unlike your last sandbox, it's not full of literal sand. <laughs> no. This is the bullet box. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ammo crate. Yeah. Nice. No, yeah, so guys, be on the lookout for that. And of course, if they're making a commercial for Madness Project Nexus, I mean, that can only imply the game's getting pretty close to being done. So you should all be on the edge of your seats waiting for that. Um, guys, I want to thank you for coming on the show, Hans. You in particular, uh, as usual, you're like one of my favorite guests because you're pretty much uh, the host. <laughs> but I, I, I'm just sitting here going, "Yeah, I'm coasting. I don't have to think up any questions." Or when I did, he just he just answered it anyway before it came out of my mouth. It's fucking great. I love it. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, before I do leave, there is a couple things I do want to bring up. Uh, today is officially the one year anniversary of the founding of the new grounds podcast or at least since our first episode so one year new grounds podcast everybody involved in the podcast yeah exactly to the day to the day this is this is the one year anniversary of the first episode uh which was called uh, send us your moan compilation so we've grown a little since that one (laughs) 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 um yes to growth uh, in more ways than one you know what i'm saying (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so i gotta remove a growth on my shoulder pretty soon yeah you should <laughs> not get that to that growth uh, the other thing i want to do is uh shout out our patreons especially our newest patreon who is here live with us today specter lee thank you for jumping on board our patreon uh as usual we also have oh wait i forgot this it's important because it says that these these ten dollar and above donors i uh, get a boulder mention so uh <clears throat> specter lee thank you for being a patron, uh, Tom Falk, thank you for being a patron. And then the rest of you, uh, Plum Fott, Charissa, Boozle, and Zachary Jones, a.k.a. ZJ. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Uh, the other thing I wanted to add was uh, if you do want to be a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash NG podcast, just NG podcast. And uh, yeah, if you uh, help us out, all the money goes kind of back into the community. We used to do things like boost the server, uh, fun things like our block party we had last summer, which I think we're going to be doing again this year. Fun artists, things like that. So yeah, definitely check it out if you're interested in supporting the podcast. Uh, all that money goes right back into this community. So thank you all so much. Have a great one. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye. <laughs>